Hey there, Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com, and I'm going to show you a brand new pen into the US anyway. I'm not sure if Japan's had this one for a little while, but this is the first time I've seen it in my hands. The Pilot E95S. Super easy to remember name, I know, but it is a really, really cool pen. For those of you who are not familiar with Pilot, you probably haven't been exposed to that many fountain pens because Pilot has a lot of good ones. You got the Metropolitan, the Vanishing Point, all kinds of different pens that are just like staples in the pen world. And um, I don't know if the E95S is going to become like a new staple, but I think it's gonna have a loyal following because it's a really cool pen. Pilot's been around for a while. They're a Japanese company. They manufacture all their own stuff. They make all their own nibs in Japan. So they do some really neat stuff. Their nibs tend to be ground a little bit finer than some of the European ones. And uh, they were established in 1918. So at this point, they pretty much know what they're doing. So let's take a look at the packaging for the E95S, at least as it is right now. You know, here I am in September of 2014. They could change the packaging. They've done it on some of the other pens before, but this is what it looks like as of right now. It's a box if you've gotten a Vanishing Point or a Stargazer or a Falcon anytime, then this is the similar kind of box that you're gonna see there. It's this uh, kind of clear top box. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty sturdy, pretty durable. It's not like the best box, not the worst box, um, but inside it's got the pen. So you get a nice little preview with the window there. You pull some of the guts out and you get to see, oh, whoops, I pulled the whole insert out. Okay, while well, you pull that part out, it gives you your little use and care guide. It gives you a cartridge that you can use that takes proprietary Pilot Namiki ink cartridges. And it also comes with a CON20 converter and I'll show you more of that in just a second. I want you to slide the pen right out of here. It does have a little sticker on the pen, so um, you know you can just peel that right off of there, but I'll leave it on for the time being while we kind of check out this pen. Now, the E95S does come in two different colors. There's the burgundy and gold, and then there's the black, which is black and gold trim. Um, so both of them have gold trim. They have 14 karat gold nibs on them, and on both of them, the body matches the uh, grip section. I guess you can call this the body. It's a really short body, as you can tell. And then the cap is very long. The burgundy gold's got the gold cap, and the black has the black one, obviously. So taking a little closer look at the E95S, it's got some really cool things going on with it. They're kind of different than some other pens. Um, aesthetically, it's got really kind of an, a classic design. So it, it looks like uh, more of a vintage kind of pen, just with some of the, the lines that it has. And I don't know, I guess I can't put my finger on exactly why I feel that it looks older, but it just does. It's, uh, so it's kind of neat. It's a, it's a modern pen, but it's also very classic. It has an inlaid nib, which is really kind of cool. You don't see that on a lot of pens these days, um, especially coming from Pilot. So that's, that's really kind of neat. Um, the pen is a, I guess you could call it a snap cap. It doesn't actually snap. It's more like a slide cap or a push cap. I don't know, but uh, it's this really, really short body. So um, you can look at the, the full details on GoulaiPens.com, but it's really short. You know, um, I would consider this to be a pocket pen, but then when you post it, the pen becomes much longer, more like a conventional pen. So that's really kind of how this thing is designed. If you're using it without that cap, I mean, I've got pretty big hands, but that's when it's gonna become kind of troublesome uh, for, <laughs> for big handed folks like me, because it gets a little hard to hold. Um, the cap itself is really long. The clip is really kind of a normal shape. It's got a good amount of tension to it. I wouldn't overdo it with the spring because I don't know that it's like super durable kind of thing, but it's probably, you know, around average. It doesn't have anything crazy going on with the finials or anything like that. Some of the unique features of the E95S would be that the nib is a little bit soft. Now they don't advertise it as a soft nib, okay? No flex, no soft, none of that. That is, that is not something that Pilot is saying, that's something that I'm saying right now. It's got a little bit of soft nib. I would call it springiness to the point where you can actually get some line variation out of it if you want to, but don't go overboard because it's easy to overdo it. So just be careful with it. But it does feel really good while you're writing. You know, it's definitely what I would call a pocket pen, very portable, very small, but I don't know how durable it's gonna be because it's such a light pen. The thing's only 15 grams with the converter. So it's gonna be, you know, I just, for me, I, I tend to associate heaviness with durability. I know that's not always the best uh, judge of durability, but um, in, in this case, I would just question, you know, 
if it's probably not something you want to just throw into your purse or in your pocket or whatever. You'd want to put it into a, a leather sleeve or something like that uh, if you were going to be kind of just tossing it around. The super smooth kind of capping action is really just unique. I really love that. And the fact that it's got this inlaid nib is really cool. And uh, the best thing about this pen um, is the fact that you're getting a 14 karat nib gold pen at $136. It's a list price of 170. We got it for 136 at Goulet, but um, that is the least expensive gold nib pen that I think we offer. So that's really pretty cool. Um, it puts it right in there with like the Namiki Falcon, the Pilot Vanishing Point, and other pens that are in that uh, kind of affordable gold nib price range. The pen is a cartridge converter. It does come with the CON20 in here, so you unscrew the back like this to get access to the converter. And you can just pull it out of here. It's just friction fit in there. It's in there pretty tight to start, so you've got to give it a pretty decent yank. So it comes with a CON20 converter, which looks very similar. If you have a Pilot Metropolitan, the converter that comes with that one, it's the same ink capacity in there. It's about a milliliter. Um, maybe a little bit more. So it's a pretty decent ink capacity. It's this kind of aerometric, you know, push uh, converter. It does not fit the Con 50 though. So that is kind of a bummer for some folks because the Con 50 is clear. It's a twist converter. It's a little bit easier to use. It doesn't have as much ink capacity, but some people still prefer it. This does not fit into this pen because the metal band up here is too fat to fit on the cap. And I'll show you that right there. It also does not fit the larger CON70 converter, as you could probably guess seeing how short this pen is. All right, so let's ink this thing up and take it for a test drive. I grabbed the extra fine. Um, I've got it in extra fine, fine, and medium on gulipens.com. I got a bottle of Pilot Hiroshizuku Kujaku here. Love this ink, very appropriate color for this season. So, um, pretty easy to fill if you've never filled one of these aerometric converters before. It's pretty straightforward. There you go. Literally, all you got to do is squeeze this thing, and then you dip the pen in there and you let it go. And you do that a couple of times. Let it sit in there for a few seconds, and the thing is inked up. And then I've got a Rhodia number 16 dot pad here that I'm going to use. Very fine nib. And if you want to, you can even flex that thing out a little bit and get a little bit of variation. I wouldn't go nuts. You're going to get maybe up to a medium point on this extra fine. They're all just a little bit soft, and so you can get a little bit of variation. The extra fine definitely shows it the most, but it feels a little scratchier when you do that. So It's not a gusher, the extra fine. You know, it's putting down a decent amount. This ink is, you know, Kujaku. Not a gusher, puts it down a decent line. The extra fine and the fine write a little on the dry side, and the nibs tend to be ground a little finer than most other pens. The medium is definitely wetter though, so you're gonna get a little bit more of a gush, and you can check out gouletpens.com nib nook to see uh, more about how these nibs write in comparison to some of the other pens that we have. So I wanted to grab some other pens that I thought were somewhat comparable just to show you, um, you know, and actually all the comparable ones that I grabbed, I like, usually like to grab three and um, they're all Pilots. <laughs> Pilots got a lot of nice pens and a lot of pens kind of right in this price range here, you know, the $140 to $150 gold nib pens. So here I've got the E95S. You can definitely see it's a little more of a pocket pen. The ones I wanted to compare it to here, I've got a Pilot Stargazer. I've got the Pilot Vanishing Point. This is the black matte version. And then I've got a um, Pilot Falcon. Now, this is transitioning the brand over from Namiki, but it's the same thing, Namiki Falcon, Pilot Falcon, same kind of thing. So you can see here how they compare in size to each other. But uh, when you post these things, for example, I'll show you the Stargazer. When you've got the Stargazer and you post it, 
you know, it gets to be a pretty decent length. When you're doing the E95S, you're actually going to get a little more length out of it. So even though it's a shorter pen, you're going to get more length out of it when it comes time to actually write with it. So my personal preferences, you know, my take it points for this pen, that would be that it's, uh, it's very light. So if you want to carry this thing around, if you like light pens, this is about as light as it gets. It's, it's almost as light as a Platinum Preppy, which is, you know, one of the lightest pens out there. Um, it's really classy looking too. So if you whip this thing out, it's, it's evident that you are pretty serious about your pens. And it's got a really smooth nib, a lot of spring to it. I just love the way that this pen writes. Some of the points that I could leave, you know, leave it. I would say the fact that you can't see the ink level is a little bit of a bummer. It's not a total deal breaker though. I mean, I use my Metropolitan with the same converter and it's just fine. But some people like to see that ink level. The durability to me is a little bit of a question. I don't have a legitimate reason to really think that it's, it's going to be an issue, but you know, it, I would just treat this pen, you know, like you would any other hundred plus dollar pen. And then the fact that it has to be posted to use, most of the people that I know like to use their pens posted anyway, so it's really not a big deal. But the fact that you have to pretty much just limits it a little bit, you know, maybe that's a, more of a deal breaker for you than for others. So why would you want to get an E95S? If you like something that's portable, you like it for taking quick notes, something that's easy to uncap and cap and post. It's really nice for jotting down quick stuff. That extra fine nib especially, really great for when you're taking notes on especially American paper that is really absorbent. That fine nib will really do some good for you. And really it's just kind of a nice, um, you know, portable pen. So that's why I like it. Um, if you want to learn more about the E95S, you can check out GouletPens.com for full specs and details. And you can, if you have any questions, you can always leave a comment on YouTube or on Ink Nouveau, and I'll do my best to answer it. If you like this video and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, and right on.